everyone, it is Elmer, and in today's video, I will be doing a tutorial for my LEGO Vacuum Butterfly Engine. So these engines are some of the simplest LEGO Vacuum Engines you can make, as they don't even require a valve. All they just have is one piston. And I'll explain how that all works at the end of the video. But first, I'm going to show it running, and then I will get into the tutorial. And this engine, if you put, a, if you put um, more suction than this piece I have on here right now will allow. And if you put enough on there, I've gotten it to do up to 850 RPM. And we do apologize, me and Kevin. We apologize for not uploading in a long time, and we will be trying to upload more often. So anyway, let's run it, and then get to the tutorial. And just as a heads up, our vacuum's a bit noisy, so you might want to turn your volume down a little bit. And I switched the clear panels around so you can see the piston from the camera. Anyways, let's fire it up. not turning over very fast right now because I have such a small air inlet, but it does turn over a lot faster if you put a larger one on it. Anyways, let's get to the tutorial. So to start off, you're going to want to take a 20 by 20 base plate. If you don't have one, you can use a 16 by 16 base plate. Those will work too. In this case, I'm just using the 20 by 20. So first thing you're want, going to want to do is take three one by six pieces of any color. The colors in this build do not matter whatsoever. I'm just using mostly black. And stack three one by sixes up. And then take a one by six brick that has holes all the way through it and put that on top. You don't want to do that three times. So stack three more up and put on the one by six. That's two. Stack three more up. That's three. So, the f so what you're going to want to do is take your base plate then and put one of them on just a couple bumps back. And this build, it takes up around 12 to 15 bumps. I'd recommend having a base plate or at least making sure that you have at least 12 bumps between this piece and the edge. Then what you're going to want to do is take two of these pieces, little ovals that have a round hole in them and an axle hole. You're going to want to take one of these pieces, which is three bumps long, one's, one is snap, two of them are axle, and put the snap part in. You, some people, when I've seen other LEGO vacuum engine videos, they have fancy crankshaft pieces. I don't have those, so I just make it like this. Then what you're going to want to do is take L corner like this. You can just set that down for now. L corner Lego Technic piece two and two of these pieces. So take the first one of your one by twos with two holes and take three bump or three bump long snaps that are all round snaps. Put two of them into the holes on there. Slide them through the front two bumps on the short side of this. Then put your other one on. And see, I have them upright like this, but I could flip them over. Which is how I'm going to do it, but that really does not matter. You can do it either way. I just like it upside down. Don't ask me why. I really don't know. And take your second one. Put it on in the same orientation. Then take a 4x4 four four plate and snap it on like that. Make sure that the back is level with the edge. And it's going to have to be on either side. But that will matter once you build your engine. Then you can take this piece that you put, already put the snap in. Slide one of the axle pieces through. Then take a second one of those oval pieces. That's one snap, one axle. And put the axle through the whole end, not the axle part. Then you're going to want to take 
a short axle of some kind, actually any axle works for this part, and put it through the side. And as you can see, put it through the side that is not against this edge. Because then you'll take either two of these little snaps or one longer ones, they're used for locking axles in place, slide it down the axle and put it on right there. Because then, as you can see, you put it through the axle side because then it grips. And then slide that through your first piece. Actually, I'm going to move this over a little bit. Slide that through your first piece. Then take a decently sized axle and put it through the axle hole on the other side of the crankshaft. Just make sure it doesn't stick out. But, and t this may be falling apart now, but once you get the other side on, take your second one of these pieces that you assembled at the start, slide it down the axle. Once you get this piece on, it'll lock everything together. And then as you can see, it also aligns the two crankshaft pieces. So now we're gonna add the flywheel, but first I'm gonna explain why you need a flywheel. So as you can see, this turns over plenty freely, but it doesn't keep spinning. So it would not work because it doesn't have the force to go down again. It doesn't have the rotational inertia to do the exhaust stroke. Which is why you use a flywheel or multiple flywheels. So you'll put the flywheel on and then put your third piece as a brace to support the axle. The distance between the distance between um, these two with around the flywheel doesn't really matter, but as long as the axle st still sticks out. But then look what happens if I turn it over with the flywheel. It turns over multiple times without stopping. You're gonna want a snap of any length that can go around an axle and just put it around the other side of this short axle. I just both forgot to do that. Don't tighten it right up, leave just a little bit of play in there. So it can just go back and forth a little bit, but not much. Next, we're gonna build the ch piston chamber. So you're gonna wanna take two one by sixes, again, of any color, and put them, or put it on the side that the piston is not. So like flip the piston to the left, put the one by six on the right, flip the piston up then put it on or else you won't be able to use your engine because it won't have a piston in the right place then take two one by four pieces and just put them on either side on top of these do that again but this time i'm putting a one by six on the sides and one by fours on the front and back pretty much you just have to build it up two layers so you can't really see handles in the way or you just have to build it up two layers. Then take a one by six or one by six by five or three of these pieces, or you can just stack up bricks till it's one bump thick, six bumps long, and five tall. Put that on the front and back. Like I said, you can use any stack of bricks to substitute for this. Same thing for the side walls. It's five one by fours stacked up. Put that on this side, the side that doesn't have the flywheel. And then if you want, you can do what I did and take two one by two by three glass pieces and put them underneath two one by fours and stick them on this side so that you can see into the piston chamber that on. As you can see, um, before everything's tightened up, like if this wall's out a little bit, it reduces friction and this turns over way better. But once everything's tightened up, it won't turn over quite that well, but it should still turn over fairly freely. So then what you're going to want to do is build this top part. So you're going to take a one by six, put it on the front, then take a one by four, put it, sorry, put it aside there, and then another one by four, and put it there. 
and then one by sixes on other sides of those. My camera just quit for some reason. And the same thing, one higher. I recommend swapping the pieces out, but only put a one by six on the one side, because on the other side, you're gonna wanna put two one by two pieces and then your air intake. So if you have a very powerful vacuum, it will run with one, but it will run much, much faster if you have one of these pieces, which has two holes. But I've found that if you put three holes on with our vacuum, it pulls enough force that it doesn't work. Then you're gonna wanna take a six by six plate, put it on top, then a two by six brick right there, and then a two by four brick right there. So that's how you build this engine. Now I'm gonna show you how it works. So if we take this off and look inside, there's the piston. And most Lego vacuum engines, standard ones that will have multiple piston chambers or run at higher RPMs, they'll have a valve to block the airflow so the piston can have an exhaust stroke. Because otherwise, without a valve, the piston would go up and stay up. They need a way to block the air so that the piston can use its flywheel to go down and then come back up. But how butterflies work is they go up level, as you can see. But they, when they go down... Shine a light in there again. They come up level. And they seal. But when they come up level and create a seal, but when they go down, they tilt a little bit like that, and that breaks the seal. And then there's an air, there's a way that air can get into the piston chamber, so when the vacuum pulls air from there, as it goes down, then it seals again, comes up, opens, breaks the seal, lets it go down. So that's how butterflies work, which makes them the simplest. One of the, if not the simplest, vacuum engine you can make out of Lego. So, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and learned how to make a Lego vacuum engine. Please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye!